Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a great big Alec welcome to our own wonderful Dr. Alveda King. Hi, everybody. Hi. No, 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 honestly, it's okay, it's okay. You're having dinner, lunch. Now, usually I ask you to sing with me, but since we're eating, I'm gonna ask you to put your right hand over your heart and raise your left hand towards heaven and kind of reflect on the last few words of the song, How Great Thou Art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. You can sing the last words. How great thou art. How great thou art. Give God that hand clap. Give it to God. Give it to God. Hello, legislators of America. Hello, hello. I'm one of your community that makes me your big sister because I left, I was there in the 70s and the 80s. But I was a state representative, Alveda King. I was billed then of District 28, House District. So hello, hello. I appreciate the kind introduction, the warm welcome and the applause. And I just say thank you. As a former state legislator, I'm also grateful for this opportunity to come together with you during this critical time to discuss some of the most pressing issues facing our nation. Indeed, education is a civil rights issue today that has once again been thrust into the national spotlight as more and more parents have awakened to the realities of what is going on in our nation's schools. Today, while reading and math scores are down across this nation, children are being taught vulgar gender ideologies, hateful racial theories, and a general disrespect for our very nation. How in the world did we get here? As a nation founded upon ideals on freedom, equality, and self-governance, our founding fathers recognized that public education and a well-formed citizenry were necessary for the lasting of this republic. Our nation is founded on the principles of self-government. Therefore, it stands to reason that those citizens must be properly educated so that they may know how to effectively govern themselves. We must act now for the generations to come. Noah Webster, the father of American scholarship and education, said that systems of education should be adopted and pursued, which may not only diffuse a knowledge of the sciences, but may implant in the minds of the American youth the principles of virtue and of liberty and inspire them with just and liberal ideas of government and with an inviolable attachment to their own country. And this is not in my notes, but I would say let's put that work ethic back that sanctity of life regard. Absolutely. In Webster's mind, a well-rounded education would prepare children to become well-formed citizens who understood the principles of their country's government and become well-equipped to lead that nation into the future. Now, I'm not gonna stay long on the problem because you all could get up here and help me define those problems, but let's just think about it for a moment. Sadly, in America today, we have long abandoned that, the formula that we so desire to get back to. Today, education officials place more emphasis on left-wing agendas like equity and social justice rather than quality education. Meanwhile, many American parents naively assume that regardless of political fights, our children will be off limits to calculated manipulation. But the onset of COVID, you know, really did expose everything. When schools sent children home for remote learning, as if there could be such a thing for young children, parents were given a wake-up call when they saw their children's assignments and overheard their classes. The radical left has divided this nation by promoting Marxist ideologies like critical race theory, where innocent children are taught that they are either an oppressor or oppressed based on the color of their skin, and that our nation's history is one of, of nothing but hatred and oppression. 
Now, we're not colorblind. I can see skin color, but it's not supposed to be a barrier. We should unite because of our ethnicity. Yep, yep, yep. But wait a minute, wait a minute, it doesn't stop there. The left is now hypersexualizing our children by teaching content that is way too mature for their innocent minds and encouraging them to explore their sexual identity, all under the disguise of inclusiveness and equity. Your parents and grandparents, you know, sometimes when parents are kissed and the little kids will go, ew, ew, you know, and say, because they're too little to get into that kind of thinking, they're too young. Of course, parents don't want this dangerous nonsense in schools any more than we do. In fact, about three out of four parents don't even believe that our founding ideals of liberty and equality were false and that American history should be reframed. Another 80% oppose using classrooms to promote political agendas, and nearly 70% oppose schools teaching that America was founded on racism. Education officials, school board members, and the unions recognize that parents feel this way, and that's why they've done all they can to hide their agenda in code words, like social and emotional learning, equity, action, civics, and more covert words and phrases, all to conceal their true intention for our children. Same thing happened with the word abortion, if you remember that. And it's back to the state, so be ready to help babies be born, y'all. Be ready. Be ready. Okay. Meanwhile, our schools continue to decline and fall behind the rest of the world, and our children continue to struggle, particularly minority children. For example, in Baltimore, a city with 90% minority enrollment in public school, only 15% of students tested as proficient for reading. For math, that number drops to 8%. All in all, about 41% of Baltimore's 20,500 20, public high school students earn below a 1.0 grade point average. That means that almost half of all students average worse than a D in school, and many of these dismal trends have only been accelerated by the pandemic and the transition to remote learning. In an effort to push a radical agenda on our children, the left has ignored the data and evidence that our schools are failing and our children and those particularly in our undeserved communities continue to fall behind. The solutions are very, very clear. Stay busy, stay, stay encouraged, stay courageous, do what the Supreme Court justices did to send the question of life back to the states and do what's right. And we're going to be praying for you and that's really very important too. Now, I'm going to conclude here because I'm right at the end of our time. I want us to remember that we are bridge builders. And, you know, I have this little thing I say at Thanksgiving when my family comes over and we disagree. I'm not going to take the turkey leg off the turkey and beat you with it. We're going to get along and we're going to pray. So build a bridge. All hands on deck. Let's take care of America. You've been elected. Be courageous. I promise you that we will be praying for you. We can forgive. We can move forward. You can have courage. You can do what's right because it's right. And God bless you.